Hi, my name is Chris Gallardi, Director of Operations here at Specialized Helicopters. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Garmin G500 installation into the Robinson R44 helicopter. This is an absolutely fantastic installation. It provides great pilot situational awareness and most of all, we use it for IFR flight training. We started off with the R22 glass cockpit trainer. It was a Sajin product. Fantastic, but the price point was pretty high. The Garmin product brings that price point down significantly and allows a much better play training experience for the uh, student. It also allows us to put more people in the back seat for additional training so that students in the back can on look over uh, the, the flying pilot or the flying student. We're finding out that the students are meeting the minimums quicker, so they're going through training faster. It's got better situational awareness, and when you compare costs relative to a glass cockpit installation and the analog, old analog gauges, we're actually seeing a good savings with that. So it's cheaper to install than glass. Than the glass is cheaper to install than, than analog gauges, and it's less expensive to operate, and it's better on the students. A win-win-win situation. So let's go fly with our flight instructor Nick. Will be up here in a little bit. He's going to show you how the system works. When that arrow, when it comes up with an arrow at the end of that line, that's showing more than double standard rate or significantly over a standard rate turn. Standard rate turn in this is roughly 13 to 15 degrees. Yeah, the needle will flip. So what this unit will do is the standard 430 will give you a 10 second countdown to your turn. When the, when the 430 unit tells you it's time to turn, this GPS needle on here, only in GPS mode, not in VLOC mode, this needle will switch to your next course. In VLOC, you have to change it manually. And then the other nice feature is it gives you up here a good readout. You get GPS mode, we're going to Utah intersection, it's 6.6 .6 nautical miles away, it gives you your desired track, and it gives you your actual track to that. So a significant amount of information is contained between these two. Hi, my name's Nick with Specialized Helicopters, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the newest addition to our fleet, our R44-2, with the G500 glass panel display. I want to talk a little bit about some of the exciting features of it, some of the innovating features, and also some of the things that make it easier to train on, cheaper to train on, and more beneficial for students with the upcoming advances in aviation technology. So if you look at it, what you can see is that magenta diamond as well as that blue dotted line, those are giving us our actual track, and that's based off of our wind. So by lining those up with our course, that's our wind correction angle. That glide slope can be used as a situational awareness only tool. You still have to abide by altitude. But it is a good thing to use. If you were to stay on it, it will generally take you right to the spot you want to be at the right altitude. Number three, Bravo Kilo. Maintain VFR. Contact the winds tower 119.4. 119.4. Maintain VFR. Three, Bravo Kilo. Okay. So let's switch. Uh, we're switched over. Okay. Salinas Tower, helicopter 63 Bravo Kilo, is inbound on the GPS 13 with India. Very nice. 63 Bravo Kilo, Salinas Tower, port 5 miles. Port 5 miles, 3 Bravo Kilo. So we're going to go ahead and turn this unit on. It's pretty simple. We're going to flip our master power on, and that's going to start our screens booting up. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on our 430 unit, our Garmin 430 GPS with WAS because our entire G500 system is run directly through our 400 series GPS. It also runs the 400-500 series GPS, so anyone familiar with those can easily work these units. All right, so what we're gonna do to start originally is after everything's powered up, we're gonna go ahead and just like every other time when you use the 400-500 series GPSs, we're gonna check our database confirm the date on the database and we're going to go ahead and hit enter. After we hit enter it comes up with the normal screen talking about our CDI, our glide slope and our flags which we can come up here now to the G500 screen here on the PDF on the right hand side. Correction PFD on the right hand side and you're going to see the needle is half left 
slope, there are no flags. Our glide slope is half up and there are no flags. Therefore, we can confirm that what we're reading on this screen matches what we're reading on this screen and we can go ahead and push enter down here on the 430. Now that will begin to acquire satellites. It already has the satellites. So now we have our screen booted up here for our PFD. We have our screen booted up here for our 430. And we can go ahead and push the button on our MFD after confirming our databases to bring up our moving map. Now we're ready to go ahead and plug in whichever flight plan, airports, approaches we would like to put in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show how to load a flight plan and how to bring it up on the G500. Simply all we do is we're going to go ahead and hit flight plan and we're sitting here at the Watsonville airport so let's plug in a, an approach into Watsonville simply for ease of use. We have Watsonville in, we're going to go ahead and hit the procedures button on the 430 and we're going to select approach and hit enter. We'd like to do the GPS too because that utilizes the most features of this neat system and we're going to hit enter. Now we have to decide where we want to do the approach beginning from. We're going to go ahead and select RISPI intersection and we're going to press enter. Now we'd like to activate that approach so we're going to scroll down to activate and we're going to hit enter and that's going to bring up our approach on the 430. As we come up here to the 500, you can see on the moving map page here, we have our magenta line showing us our actual flight plan. We can scroll out and see a little bit more of it. And it's going to go ahead and show us everything that we're planning on doing as well as our missed approach. You can also see over here on the primary display that we now have our CDI needle lined up because we have a course. We have GPS, waypoint up here is RISPI, distance is 14.8, and we have a desired track and an actual track heading towards that waypoint. Sync our attitude. And that's the ease of loading an approach into the 500 through the 430 console. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our moving map page, our multifunctioning display, and our primary flight display. We're going to go ahead and start with the multifunctioning display. Up here we have our moving map page. It has everything loaded into it for the approach that we're planning on doing as well as our missed approach. We can zoom it out and we can see some of the track that we're eventually going to be flying. It also gives us the ability to declutter it and by pushing the declutter we can go through different levels of declutter taking out waypoints, taking out airports, taking out roads so that we can better see what we've loaded into the GPS. We can also go back to where we were that way it gives us more situational awareness. It all depends on what works best for you. We can also switch back and forth between our maps. So if we're within view of a traffic antenna we can put it on traffic and receive our traffic data. Right now we're on topo. We can also go ahead and switch it to terrain and we can get our terrain which allows us to see different heights around us depending on what we're flying using this particular unit. Go back to topo because that's what most people use. And then we can also, it shows us advisories. Right now we do not have traffic so it's telling us that traffic is unavailable. We have a couple of other pages in here. So we go ahead and flip to our auxiliary page and our auxiliary page has some of the more pertinent information. The units that we're using, the date and the time so that everything is correct. Because what you're going to see here is as we go to the next chapter in here, it's our flight plan chapter. This is why you want your times to be correct. Because in here in your flight plan page, what it's going to do is it's going to take everything from the 430 and it's going to plug that same flight plan into the 500 but it's also going to give you local time as to when you're going to arrive there and can also give you altitudes, courses, everything else that you're looking for as well as the best altitude to be at for that particular leg. Also in this flight plan chapter you have the airport information and finally the neatest feature of this whole unit is the fact that we actually have what's called chart view. And by going into chart view, we can actually go ahead and we can scroll in and we can view, right now we're looking at the airport diagram for Watsonville. 
we can also go ahead and scroll back out and by selecting which chart we'd like to select, we can go ahead and scroll in. We can bring up the GPS 2 that we were just going to fly and actually view our chart on the page right next to our flight instruments. So finally, what I'd like to talk about now that we've talked about our multifunctioning displays, I'd like to talk about our primary flight display. This is where we're going to get all of our flight instrumentation. We have backups down here, but this is where all of our main instrumentation comes from. So we'll start down here at the bottom. At the bottom here, we have our horizontal situation indicator, also used for our VOR, all of our main primary direction instruments right here with our CDI and our heading bug, all in this one unit. That's all adjusted with the buttons here on this right hand side. Anything we want to change gets changed first by pushing the button, so the heading button, and then we can scroll our heading bug as you can see the heading bug moving here on the left side of the HSI. Now with GPS we're not able to adjust our course but if we were to be on VLOC now we can push the course button and we can adjust our course as well. And that's simply done with the buttons on the right hand side along with the primary flight display knob. Next thing we'll go ahead and we'll move over and we'll move over to our vertical speed indicator. Vertical speed indicator works the same way as the other vertical speed indicators such as the steam gauges. However, it just shows it in a digital readout which makes it a little bit more accurate, a little bit easier to see exactly what you're looking for. We also have a vertical speed bug here so we can set, we can push that and we can set it if say we want to climb at 500 feet per minute or we want to descend at 500 feet per minute. We can set the bug and that gives us something to shoot for. As we move up, we get to our altimeter. Altimeter functions the exact same way as a normal altimeter, except with the digital readout. Once again, it gives us more accuracy. We simply adjust that by hitting this barrow button. We push that, it comes up over here, and we can adjust our altimeter to whatever we want it to adjust to. Up and down, and it's going to move it correspondingly over here on the right-hand side of the screen. Up at the top, we have an altitude bug that we can set for cruising for the minimum descent altitude or the descent al decision altitude for an instrument approach which we can set with this alt button right here. We go ahead and we push that and we can dial that into whatever altitude we want it to be. After that we move over we have our attitude indicator. Our attitude indicator once again looks exactly like a steam gauge except it's going to give us a little bit more accuracy and the biggest thing is we don't have the precession problems that a standard gyroscope does. This is all used by solid state accelerometers which are not subject to the same errors therefore the cost of operating these systems are a lot lower. We move up to the top of the attitude indicator. Now this is where it becomes a little bit different than the standard instrumentation but can actually be a bit easier. We've now broken our turn coordinator into two different places, basically into the two separate instruments that it is. Down here we have at the top of this particular instrument, the top of our HSI, we're going to have a magenta line that's going to come out and as we make our turn is going to be half standard rate and full standard rate corresponding to those lines. Now we get up here to our slip skid indicator and our slip skid indicator is going to be this line underneath the arrow for our attitude indicator and that's going to go ahead and push out to either side depending on whether we're in a slip or a skid. Once again it corrects the exact same way as the normal ball in a slip skid indicator. Continuing to the left hand side we have our airspeed. Our airspeed is going to be referenced once again in individual numbers which is really nice for accuracy as well as at the top of the screen we have ground speed and at the bottom of the screen we have our true airspeed. Gives us a little more accuracy, takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it. Down below that now, this is where this 
particular instrument gets really nice, we have our wind data. Our wind data is going to be based off of our ground track and the GPS is going to do some calculations and it's going to calculate a direction and a velocity of that wind coming in and it's going to give us an arrow with the direction and velocity so that it makes wind corrections a lot simpler. Down below we have our standard temperature degrees Celsius, easy reference. And the biggest thing about this whole unit that makes it so much nicer is everything is referenced in single degrees, which makes accuracy and precision for students a lot easier. So the most important thing behind what I just did in showing you the instruments in the way that I showed you is that that's the best scan for this particular instrument is what's called the diamond scan. So it's easiest to start here at the bottom, move over here to your VSI, and your altimeter, up to your attitude indicator, and your slip skid, back over to your airspeed, and your wind direction, and then back down to your HSI. It's a little bit different than your typical scans, but that's what works best for this particular unit. That's the Garmin G500 glass panel display, coupled with the 400-500 series GPS. I'm Nick for Specialized Helicopters. I appreciate you checking out into our newest system and our, our latest and greatest piece of technology for helicopter into a flight. The important thing to remember is the faster you go, the more ground you chew up. So a 700 foot right. rate of descent at 95 to 100 is about the same as a 500 foot at 85 to 90. Correct. So now you've got your airspeed about where you want it, just work that collective a little bit to get that how you want it. Well, I really hope you enjoyed your tour of the Garmin G500 glass cockpit installed in the Robinson R44 helicopter. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience for us to put this, put this installation into this aircraft. It works like a charm, it's less expensive, it's simpler, and our students are achieving their ratings at the minimums. It, is not, it does not get better than this. So we'll see you next time. I'm Chris for Specialized Helicopters. Hope you enjoyed your time.